Let's have a look at networks in networks. So for recollection, on the left hand side, we have the VGG network where we have basically those convolutions and ReLU blocks. And on the right hand side, we have the NIN blocks, which are basically a convolution followed by two one by one convolutions with max pooling. And in the end, global average pooling. So get going. Well, let's start by importing things. So this is just MXNet and Gluon. And then we need to define a NIN block. The NIN block is quite straightforward. It takes as its argument number of channels, kernel size, strides and padding. And then, okay, we hybridize just to make it go fast again. And we go and add, you know, a convolution with ReLU and with the appropriate strides and then two one by one convolutions. They don't really need to define any padding because the size doesn't really change. And then, okay, here we need to have the actual model. So this model does nothing particularly fancy. It just uses a NIN block followed by max pooling. And it does that three times. In the end, well, we apply dropout. Then we apply one last NIN block, right? No more dropout here, no more max pooling there, but just global average pooling. And in the end, we just flatten this and that's it. So the key difference is that <coughs> here we didn't need any dense layer anymore, right? Because effectively within the NIN block, the one by one convolutions, so these guys here serve the same role as a multi-layer perceptron, but now applied on a per channel basis. Okay. So let's see what this looks like in practice. So here's a network. And if I go and apply to 224 by 224 images, right, I get out of it at first, you know, 54 by 54, then 26 by 26, then 12 by 12, and that's basically, you know, if you look at pooling, hybrid sequential, pooling, hybrid sequential, then in the end I apply dropout, and then I go to a 5 by 5 with 10 dimensional output, so this is already setting things up for the number of classes that you need in the end. Then I have another pooling, that's the global pooling, and then I'm done. So this is how you can completely avoid any dense layers whatsoever. So let's look at how this looks like in practice. So training, and I'm going to run this afterwards in a moment, but basically we can use a slightly larger learning rate because the architecture is a bit simpler. And we use a mini batch of size 128. And so we iterate over the data. The one thing that actually, as you can see, is the network doesn't work so well. This is one of the reasons why people didn't really pay so much attention, uh, so attention to networks in networks initially, but they just, I was just like, well, there's another weird network and you know, you can't really get rid of the dense layer anyway. However, they play an important role in then leading up to the uh, inception and ResNet architectures, which took very significant advantage of this removal of the dense layer to get rid of a lot of parameters. So this concludes today's lecture on network architectures. Next week we'll cover considerably more advanced architectures that are actually state of the art. Thanks for your attention and have a good weekend.